All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome in to Sun City Christian Center. It's time to gather around and lift up the name of the Lord. What do you say? We're going to open up. You guys can continue to greet each other if you like. Hug some necks, shake a few hands. You do all that kind of stuff. Jesus on the main line. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. We got to pick up the phone and call him. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the Y'all look beautiful this morning. Smiles on your faces. If you want salvation. Tell him what you want. If you want salvation. Tell him what you want. If you want salvation. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Come on, let's call him up. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. How about some Holy Ghost? You want some Holy Ghost this morning? If you want that Holy Ghost. Tell him what you want, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you Frankie's want. here this morning. If you want that Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Come on, let's call him up, Sun City Christian Center. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Back to that first verse, Jesus on the main line. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Now last time, let's call him up. You call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Come on now, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Now say that last line, Jesus. Jesus on the main line. Now one more time, we're gonna say it. Jesus on the main. Thank you. You got to get that blood flowing here in church this morning. You can go ahead and have a seat. I got a few things to tell you about. A little housekeeping, a little bit of Sunday morning announcements, if you will. First of all, if you're a first time visitor here at our church this morning, raise your hand up for us. Let us know where you're at. We want to make you feel welcome. Church, anybody? There she is, Miss Kimberly. Everybody say good morning. We don't do that to embarrass anybody, never. We, we, we've been known for a long time to be a church full of love, and that's exactly what we mean by all that. Um, there's several opportunities for you to enjoy Bible study. I'd like to remind everybody it starts early Sunday morning here at 9 a.m. right here in our fellowship hall with the ladies. We also have Monday afternoons, Pastor Roger Davis at 4 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Don't forget the same morning, Monday mornings, every morning, unless we tell you otherwise, 10 p.m. on Mondays, 10 a.m., excuse me. I'll tell you about what happened Wednesday night, too. It's funny. Anyhow, 10 a.m. Monday, pray for America. And don't forget, there's cards back there. If, if you leave here today and there's something really on your heart and, and you didn't feel like it got spoken about this morning, put on that card. It'll get prayed for. I promise you it'll get prayed for. Um, and don't forget Wednesday nights with me. We've got our final chapter this week uh, with James and then next week, I believe, is going to be Finger Food Fellowship and all that stuff. And then we're going to pick up in Galatians. So 
7.15 with me Wednesday nights. Uh, we have a lot of teen t-shirts left over from VBS and other things. They're back there on the table. Miss Jamie is selling for $3. If you want to take home one of these tees, they got nice printed tees with nice sayings uh, covered in the power of the blood, different things like that. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. But it's going to be used for the ministry. So $3 a piece back there on the back. Um, there's also a sign-up sheet for baptism. We're going to dunk some heads 21st of August. Yeah. Asked to be forgiven and then asked to get dunked. <laughs> it's sign-up sheets back there. It's the 21st. I know Jim and Mike's going to be there, right? Yes, sir. So if you'd like to be part of that or if you make up your mind that morning, you can do it as well. Don't feel that pressure. We do it because we show the change that's happened on the inside, you know? Um, there's going to be a memorial service for Miss Beverly Wilson, Mac's wife. Uh, will be Friday, August 5th, right here at church at 4 p.m. There's not going to be a dinner, but all of those, uh, we love Brother Mac. Um, we love having him part of our congregation, and we're going to have that service again, 4 p.m., August 5th on a Friday. Uh, a reminder, I've, I've, I've wanted to kind of put this in the announcements a little further out. That way we can start building. I know we've got a lot of our family that's up north. But we have Finger Food Fellowship every first Wednesday of the month, unless we tell you otherwise. And uh, I'd like to see that grow. I'd like to see a lot more faces out there. If you can make it out um, and spend some time with us, it's still long days, so there's plenty of sunshine. And if you have to duck out early, nobody's going to hold that against you. Bring a friend. It's a wonderful opportunity to witness somebody. Have them join us and break bread. Um, men's Fellowship is not going to start this coming first week in August like we do normally. We're going to start again in September. Just remember that gentleman, first week in September. And Ladies Fellowship will pick back up on the third Thursday night of September as well. And that's all we have. I know the announcements were long, but we like to keep you in the know. If there's anything that we don't talk about, you can also find this kind of stuff on the back table and our cork board back there. Like Billy and his family that we support with our missions and stuff. There's always updated stuff going on back there. I'm going to sing a song called, uh, oh, that's right. We, we threw one in. I didn't have it on the announcement sheet from Miss Jamie. Um, we are super grateful for all of you that have donated. Um, we've had super success with these yard sales, but we have got no place to put it where I can keep it and it doesn't go bad. So when we call for it, we'll, we'll let you know, in other words, when we're going to start having another one. For right now, no more donations is what I'm saying. And we're, we say that very, very much with an attitude of gratitude for everybody that's donated so far. I just don't want it to go bad before we do it the next time, you know? So uh, hold off on that. And Mama, I wanted to also say thank you for praying for Mom, Pat Russell. She's back with us today. She did the due diligence. She's <laughs> we had her locked up, quarantined, and on bed rest, feeding her food under the door. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. I'm going to sing a song that's called Chain Breaker. Brother, Brother Brian Ivey called me, and he had been asking for prayer. He didn't call, but texted me and had been saying that uh, some of his family had been diagnosed with COVID, and they were all feeling it this time. It wasn't just, oh, they were, they were down pretty good. So uh, they're feeling better. And he said, thank you for the prayers uh, to break every chain. And that's what this song's about. It's called Chain Breaker. hope it blesses you. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. Come on. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, He's a way maker. If you need freedom and saving, He's a prison shaking Savior. You've got chains, He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better. I know you know what I'm talking about. If you got pain, 
He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, He's a way maker. Yeah. If you need freedom or saving, He's a prison shaking Savior. You've got chains. He's a chain breaker. You believe it. If you receive it. If you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Say it again. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Ten, one more time. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chain, he's a chain break. If you need freedom, if you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. Say it one more time to him. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker, church. He's a pain taker and a way maker. All right, Pastor Ronnie's going to come over here and bless us with one. We haven't heard from him in a while. Well, good morning. Good morning. It does seem like it's been quite some time since I've been up here, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm really shaky. <laughs> <laughs> Most of you know the cause of that. But the song that we're going to try to do this morning says that it's over now. You know, I read in the Bible that in heaven the angels rejoice when one sinner comes home yes. to Jesus. There's another old, old song that uh, I used to listen to, and uh, I think it was written and sang by a man named Gordon Jensen. It said, it didn't make the papers in this world when I prayed through. You know, I didn't go down and find a Braden and Herald or a Sarasota Tribune or a St. Pete Times, and the headlines read, today Ronnie got saved. They really didn't care. And it also it goes on and says it didn't mean a lot to a lot of people, just a few, you know, a few close friends and family members. But the most important thing that the song did say, and I think it is very much scriptural, it says, but on the golden streets of glory, celebration banners waved. Amen. Doesn't matter what happened here. Amen. It made news in heaven Amen. when I got saved. And this song tells the story of the prodigal son. You know, when you've come to the end of your rope in this world, and everything's been thrown at you, I don't care what it is, the stench of this world is all over you. You come to your senses and you say, you know, I'm going to go home to Jesus. His arms are outstretched. And God says, let's have a feast. Amen. I do believe that. Amen. It's over now. It's over now. It's over. It's over now, it can't be long. The prisons of my past couldn't hold me, I'm free at last. My father, I see, is I'm reaching for me. 
it's over now. When I look back to yesterday and upon the many years I've wasted, I think about the many nights of hunger I spent out in the cold. I remember warming by the fire at Father's house of food, how it tasted. And knowing that the life I'm leading is needing love and love's back there at home. is behind us. God gives us brand new life. Thank you. He does, Al. He does. Believe me, he does. Give your attention to Pastor Arlen. Amen. And believe me, it's a miracle that Brother Ronnie got saved. <laughs> but it's a miracle that any of us got saved. Amen. It took a miracle to save us. Amen? Yeah. And this is what this next song is about. But as we were beginning that song, I noticed a couple walked in the back of the church. And it uh, seems like the hair color may have changed a little bit. I don't know what that's all about. But Brother George and Sister Deborah are with us today. Oh, Davenport. Wow. Some of them, you may remember them from many, many years ago. They moved off to Virginia. And uh, they love it up there. But it's good to have you here today. God yes. bless you. Amen. God bless you. We're going to do this old song. It's a miracle. I don't need a shooting star to make my dreams come true. I don't need 
God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you can be seated for just a few moments. I'm ask Brother or Pastor Rick to come up <laughs> and to lead us in some praise and worship. Brother Pastor. You know, I was, uh, as I was thinking this morning, um, ironing my shirt to come to church, put on my best for, for the good Lord Almighty, and I was thinking, you know, we put on, I, I've been trying to up my game and put on my best for God when I come into church. You know, walk the walk, talk the talk, the whole nine yards. And I thought, man, I couldn't wait to get here. I couldn't wait to get here and get all the unfilthiness of the world, all the oppression, all the stuff, the nonsense you see when you turn on the TV every time you turn it on. Amen. I couldn't wait to get here and be restored. Amen. I couldn't wait to get here and serve my Savior and praise and worship my God. And that's what we're going to do. And I hope we're a model of that for you. That's what we're supposed to be doing when we're doing this. Not just singing empty lyrics. We're supposed to be having a conversation. A conversation with God Almighty. So we're going to praise and worship the Lord. If you can do so, stand up. If you can't, you can sit there and praise and worship your Lord too. But let's spend time with God, huh? Songs called My Savior Lives. Our God will reign forever, and all the world will know his name. 
everyone together sing the song of the redeemed that's us come on i know that my redeemer is and now i stand on what he did my savior my savior lives every day's a brand new chance to say jesus you're the only way my savior my savior lives. the king has come from heaven and darkness trembles at his name victory forever is the song of the redeemed from your heart now come on i know that my redeemer did and now i stand on what he did my savior my savior lives today's a brand new day thank you jesus every day's a brand new chance to say jesus you are the only my Savior, my Savior lives. Let's sing that chorus again when we come back, all right? I know that my Redeemer lives, and now I stand on what He did. My Savior, my Savior lives. Hallelujah. Every day's a brand new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way. My Savior, my Savior lives. To the bridge. Now from your heart now, my Savior lives. My Savior lives. My Savior lives. My Savior lives. Say it again. Say it again. My Savior lives. My Savior lives. My Savior lives. Come on, come on, come on. I know that my Redeemer lives, and now I stand on what He did. My Savior, my Savior lives. Every day's a brand new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way. My Savior, my Savior live. I want to sing that chorus one more time. I know that my Redeemer lives, and now I stand on what He did. My Savior, my Savior lives. Today's a brand new chance to say, Jesus, you are the only way. My Savior, my Savior We serve a living God, church, not a wooden idol, nothing man-made, a living God. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame in love you and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands, washed me in your cleansing flow. 
now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy in the land, seated on the throne, the crown. deserve it. Not one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the love, Lord. Thank you for the pain. Wash me in your cleansing blood. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. The darling of heaven crucified. Worthy is thy. I want to sing it through one more time, Jesus. We thank you for your love. Thank you for the cross. Think about what he did, church. Thank you for the price. He bared the sin of all of us. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazingness. Thank you for the love, Lord. church worthy is the lamb seated on the throne crown you now with many crowns you reign victorious high and lifted up The Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb, the darling, the darling of heaven, crucified.
one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. Veil told before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. You are raised to life again. He has no rival. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever. God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name of the Lord. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name of Last time, what a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. right there. We're going to sing another song. Stay right there. Whatever you're saying to the Lord, whatever you're praying about, whether it's the lyrics of these songs, whatever you came in here with this morning, you stay right there. Stay right there. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song.
to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Sing that again. Worthy is thou, Lamb who was saved. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Sing it out to Him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and i will adore you in rainbows of living color flashes of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king yeah holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come, yeah. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, all struck wonder at the mention of your name jesus your name is power breath and living water such a marvelous mystery yeah holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come sing it out church thank you jesus with all creation I sing, praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will. I want to sing it one more time, just the chorus. Holy, 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 it's the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to God. Yeah. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mansion. Father God, we glorify you here. We continue to praise and worship you in our hearts, Father. I ask that you would continue to have your way with Brother Billy here who will speak and share with us, Father God. Bless him and his family abundantly as they've come and made time for our church to share in their lives what's going on on campus, Father God. And I just thank you for it. I thank you for the refreshing word. It's the way it was done in the New Testament, Father God. They came in and they spoke in the synagogues. I just ask that we would get a message here and you would provide an increase. I thank you for it. We bless it in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Thank you. 
Amen. You can be seated. Just before Billy comes and ministers here, I'd like to present something to Frankie. A few weeks ago at Vacation Bible School, he was upstairs, he and a few others, they were looking for a poster about the Mission Rangers. I shared this a few weeks ago. Of course, the Mission Rangers, we haven't had it for several years now, but as it began to kind of dwindle down and uh, our ages got to where I couldn't do it, I couldn't camp and fish and hunt and all that stuff, so uh, we had to kind of let it fold. But Frankie was the last one standing, so to speak, and he asked if he could have this poster. So, Frankie, come on up. I want to present this to you. And I, I appreciate you, brother, all the time you hung in there with me. Amen. We love you, brother. God bless you. Amen. Yep. We're just believing God that he's going to be the next one to pick up the torch and to run with it. Amen. You just never, ever know what God's going to do. As I mentioned last week, Brother Billy Cooper is with us, him and his wife, Lacey. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, the last time they were here, Lacey was expecting. Well, she's no longer expecting. They have a new baby boy. Amen. You've probably seen them when you came in. And uh, so the nursery is finally open. She's taking them over there. You know how that is sometimes. But Brother Billy, why don't you come on up here? Most of you already know him. I met his dad 20-plus years ago when he came down here and was beginning a, a, a ministry, a crusade, or excuse me, a campus ministry at USF. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was introduced to his dad. We went out and had lunch and became acquainted. We've stayed in touch with each other. And somehow I got in touch with Billy. He was just a little bitty boy. You couldn't have been, <laughs> what, five years old? Because <laughs> it was 20-plus years ago when I met his dad. But most of you know he comes each year and shows us, tells us what's happening at USF with the ministry. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Billy, and yeah. share your heart with us. Thank you. And you have the remainder of the service. All right. God bless you. Amen. You guys go till 2, right? <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> oh, I scared you all there, didn't I? Well, yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Arlen. It's wonderful to be here with you all today. And uh, normally I come and I share uh, just a report of uh, the, how our ministry to college students is going today. Uh, Pastor Allen has entrusted me uh, with the remainder of the service to, to deliver a word of the Lord for you, and uh, I hope he doesn't regret it. Um, yeah, my family is here, and uh, my wife, wonderful wife, wife Lacey is taking the kids over to nursery. Uh, we've been married now almost five years, and yeah, thank God for that. And uh, two kids are such a blessing to us, and we're so thankful for them. And, uh, you know, our, our son was born uh, four months ago, and he has a, uh, his name, his name is, we call him Liam. My name is William, really. I'm actually the fifth William in a row. It's a family name. He is, uh, he's the sixth. We call him Liam because if in our family you say Bill or Billy, everyone's like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> And so he needs to <laughs> be a little confusing. Um, and so, you know, generational blessing and passing on is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, my, my father is a pastor. He's still the pastor of Cornerstone Christian Church. And uh, I uh, really am so thankful for him and his legacy and what he's passed on to me. And today I want to share with you a little bit about it's an instruction that he has really imparted to me. Proverbs uh, chapter 6 and verse 20 and talks about how the words of a father are supposed to be like you bind them around your neck and they carry you, they, they, you, they, you carry them with you. And it, it changes the way you think and the way you view the world. And uh, I'm looking forward to the days when the words that I speak to my children will be remembered and followed hopefully. <laughs> and uh, right now, the instruction is not really big life things. It's more about, like, for the two-year-old daughter, you know, like, what's food? Food goes in your mouth. Other stuff doesn't. And then figuring out the difference between those two things. That's where we're at right now. It's challenging because some stuff that isn't food looks like food and some stuff like vice versa, right? So she calls chickpeas tiny balls. <laughs> and so <laughs> which help teaching her the difference. And instruction that I've really received in my life, one of the things that my dad really likes to say is, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. 
It's especially true. It's true in all of life, but it's especially true in the kingdom. And, you know, people, when I, I come and I minister in different churches and, and tell them about what's going on in the college campus, a lot of times they'll say, Billy, we need you. We need you out there. And it feels good to be needed. Um, but I want to say today that we need you. That the generations that come before us are so important, essential. And God's Word really has a lot to say about this. And... I, I really hope and pray that the word of the Lord we have today encourages everyone to really run their race all the way in faith uh, because the next generation needs your faith to inform theirs. And so I want to uh, open up with uh, a verse and then we can pray together afterwards. So we're going to go to uh, 1 Kings 19, 13 through 18. It's the story of Elijah we're going to talk about Elijah a bit today, and, Eli- and his son in the Lord, Elisha. So, 1 King 19, 13 through 18, and it says, And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son uh, son of Shaphat, of a word I don't know how to say, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left for me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for these wonderful saints. Lord, who am I to speak the word to them? But I pray that the words that I speak would be from you today, that your word would instruct, would encourage, the Holy Spirit would be here today as the comforter. Lord, I pray for people that need encouragement as they look at this world. I pray today they leave encouraged strongly. I pray for hope to come today and a renewed passion for the things of God. And on anyone here who has a new challenge ahead of them, I pray there be faith to take hold of that and run with it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So to give you a little context for this story, Elijah had just come from his biggest, most amazing victory. He was going up against Uh, The king at the time, Ahab, and his wife Jezebel, and they were really giving him a lot of trouble. They were leading the nation terribly. Uh, There was a lot of idolatry and terrible, terrible idolatry in the nation. And so they had, they, they said, let's see who's God. And I'm sure you've heard this story where there was a big test, and he said, the God who answers by fire, that's going to be the one who's God. And the prophets of Baal prayed, and of course, their false god couldn't do anything. And then Elijah prayed, and fire came and consumed the offering, and they routed the enemy and they, like, killed a lot of the, the prophets there, the uh, evil ones. And you'd think, wow, Elijah must feel great. He just had this incredible victory. God came from heaven and proved himself and wiped out the enemies. And, but the very next passage, here he is in a cave, depressed, sad. Even, even before this, praise and ask God, could I just die? He was wanted, didn't want to run his race anymore. Didn't, and it's kind of like, why? why? If, it, if it just had come from such victory, why, why the depression? And I, I think, I mean, it doesn't ex- explicitly say, but the nation was still a mess. The leaders were still ungodly. Things, and he felt like, he, yeah, I had a big victory but am I really the only one? And so when what a real le- le- 
learning lesson here, right, is if you believe, even if you're moving in a lot of faith, if you believe you're the only one, it's only a matter of time before you start to question and you start to get a little bit sad about it, right? Does anyone here sometimes get depressed and sad at the state of our nation? I know I do, <laughs> right? And so this is a message to combat that. Uh, this is a message about making disciples. You see, when, when we get into the Lord's response to Elijah, he, first off, I think it's funny. He's like, what you doing here? It's the first thing he says. And he says, after he says, I've, I've, I've been jealous for the Lord, and this is what's going on, and everything's bad, and what are we going to do? God basically says, go make disciples. Go anoint the new king. Go anoint the new prophet. Your ministry now is changing to you're going to teach the next generation how to fight, how to move in the power of God, how to speak to kings. And he goes, and you don't see Elijah down in the dumps anymore. He is in faith now. He goes, and he finds Elisha, and he throws his mantle on him, and Elisha comes, and Elisha was a strong dude, and he, uh, he follows him. He makes an amazing disciple. It says, in a d- different passage, it says the people recognized Elisha as the one who poured water on Elijah's hands. They were always together. Elisha was always ministering to him. And what they, it kind of the, the amazing culmination of the handing of the torch comes in uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. And for the sake of time, I will, I, we won't read all of it, right? Um, but Elijah sa- uh, says, you know, I'm, I'm going to be taken up today. This is my last day. And Elisha just follows him, and he, Elijah tries to get rid of Elisha. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go off and be with God now, and you can just go and do your thing. And Elijah's like, Elisha's like, I'm not, I'm not going to leave you. I'm with you to the end, right? And as they're going, and they, they take, do a long journey all up and around, uh, Elisha asks him, well, actually, Elijah asks Elisha, what do you want me to do for you? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of the anointing that you carry. What an amazing ask. Elijah says, that's a hard thing, but if you're with me all the way to the end, you'll have it. And so they go, and they walk, and they walk, and then bam, chariots of fire come. I would really like to see that. (laughs) <laughs> don't know what that looks like. And they swoop Elijah up. And, and before that, Elijah does his last miracle, which is really interesting. He takes his mantle, they come to a river, and he whacks the river, and it parts. And they walk through to where they go. So then the chariots of fire come, and they swoop him up, and the, as Elijah's looking up into heaven, the last thing he does is he throws that mantle down, to Elisha. He's like, go get him. And he's off, right? And Elisha takes that, and the first thing he does with it is he comes back this way to that same river. He takes that mantle, and he hits it on the river. And he says, where's the God of Elijah? And God answers, and he parts it. The first miracle Elisha does is the last one Elijah did. And from that day forward, he walked in a double portion of the anointing that Elijah, his father, had, had walked in. And, and you re- I read through all the, these miracles of Elisha. They're really amazing. If, you, if you've never read it, please do. It's fantastic stuff. And he actually does double the amount. He really did get that double portion. And it's amazing because, you know, Elijah, his, his time had come to an end. And he had done great exploits for God. But he could leave and go to heaven and happy with how things were going to be because he had made a disciple, right? And the nation was still a mess, but he could pass that on in peace, in hope, right? And so, and then Elisha ran his race. And he did an amazing thing, and he had to deal with a lot of messed up stuff in, in Israel in that day, but he was up to the task 
because of the faith of his father in the Lord, right? And so there's a couple of points here, and I, I think that are really important to, to mention, you know, is that Elijah was in faith on his very last day, right? He was hearing from God. He was doing miracles. He was still teaching Elisha all the way. His very last day, he was still an example of faith, right? I want to read uh, from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us or entangle us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The cloud of witnesses that it's referring to is in Hebrews 11. And it's the, we call it the hall of faith, and by faith Abraham, and by faith David, and by faith Moses. And, you know, and really that hall of faith for every young believer also includes those who have gone before them. It includes their pastor when they were a kid, and their grandmother, and their grandfather, their mom, and their dad. It's a countless cloud of witnesses of faith. And it helps us, who are, who are younger, run our race with endurance and set aside the things that entangle us. There is an incredible amount of entanglement on the college campus. There's an incredible amount of sin there's an incredible, a, a, a disturbing amount of weirdness, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And we, the young generation, which, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, so I'm like in my 30s now, and like they think I'm old, you know? <laughs> so they, they're like, hey, you on TikTok? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. You know, they're, they're, I'm, uh, I'm like the old guy now, right? And... Uh, they need a cloud of witnesses. And so whenever you think, man, we need people like Billy out there, remember we need you. We need you, your faith. We need veterans. Has anyone here served in the military? Is anyone a veteran? Thank you so much for your service. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Amazing thing that you did. We need veterans of the cross, people who served. Pastor Arlen is a veteran of the cross. I thank God for Pastor Arlen, a man who's been with you guys for so long, through thick and thin. Amazing. Walk with people through life, through death, all the way. A shepherd. So thankful for his example. Um, my wife came back. Let's give her a hand. There she is. How are the kids? They good? <laughs> yeah? My wife's amazing. She does such a great job. She got all those kids ready while I was like Googling, how do you preach this morning? You know, she figured it out. Don't worry, that was last week. I Googled it. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. She, she met Jesus in college. She's a, a fruit of, of uh, the ministry. Trophy of grace. So thankful for her. And she's beautiful too. <laughs> um, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the campus. And I'm going to try to keep this uh, short for you all today. You know, I want, like I said, it's, it's a weird environment. There's a lot going on out there. You see some, some disturbing things. You see just curious things sometimes. You know, me and my friend Andreas, he was, we were out there. We share the gospel every day, just about. We go out there and we meet students. We ask them, what do you believe and why do you believe it? And, and we talk about what God's word says and see if they're interested in doing a Bible study. So we're out there and we look and we see a man on rollerblades, which that's not that unusual, you know. Usually it's a skateboard. But this was not an ordinary man. This was, this was an, a middle-aged man on rollerblades in a robe, a long robe. And there's like a, like a little vest over his robe, and it's a cross. And as he gets closer, he's got a collar. And we realize it's a Catholic priest on rollerblades with a Denver Broncos hat on. <laughs> and my friend looks at me and he says, he wears the hat to be more relatable. <laughs> I'm not sure how much that was helping. Side note about relatability. You either have it or you don't, right? 
We don't have to pretend to be anything we're not, right? Whatever God has given you, that is what you need to share. We don't have to, don't put on, I'm not, not criticizing the priest, you know, I don't, shouldn't do that, but uh, just making a point. Don't, we don't, we should never pretend to be something we're not in order to reach the next generation. Because what they need is what, you, what God has invested in you. They need your wisdom. They need your faith. They need the, the experience that you have because they're going through it. And they're either going to be a knucklehead and not want to listen to anything you say, in which case there's nothing you can do anyway, or they're going to be hungry, right? And so I, I think sometimes the church trips over itself a little bit to be relatable, and we don't really, I don't think we need to worry about that too much. I think we just need to give them the gospel, right? And maybe try to be a little relatable, just a little bit. I don't know. So we go out there on the campus, and uh, every day, just about, we get to, we hear about a student through, uh, who gets saved. Last year, we had 139 students pray to give their lives to the Lord. Praise God for that. Yeah, amazing. I want to tell you about a couple of them. Usually, I get to maybe tell one story, but I got you as long as I want, so we'll do about three, right? <laughs> and, and so, so my friend Joey came to college, and he, a uh, little bit of, whoops, a little bit of Christian background, not much, and uh, he met my, my co-worker, Michael. We worked together a lot. Shared the gospel with him. And he started to come around. And he even prayed to receive Christ. But, you know, it, it, there was a lot going on underneath the surface. There was a lot of temptation. There was a lot of things drawing him away. And it didn't, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't 100% sincere. And the environment of the campus started to get to him, and he really started to stop coming to church. He fell away. This happens from time to time. And, you know, then COVID comes. And what COVID did is it stripped away, layer by layer, all the things that people put their trust in that are not God, right? And he fell into deeper and deeper depression and loneliness and emptiness and all these things that had previously had such an allure, they're gone. And so he starts to cry out for God. And he, he got his life right with the Lord. He ran into Michael again. And he's like, I, I need deliverance. <laughs> I, I've gotten into some bad stuff and I need God to pull me out of it. And so we got to get in there with him and he see his life completely changed. He's coming to my house later for small group this afternoon. Amazing. He's uh, so full of life, so full of joy. It's Jesus to set him free. Yeah. My friend Justin, he... Uh, no, again, not really a Christian background. He went, started going to church a little bit in high school, and he uh, was really enjoying it, and he had a lot of friends that were Christians, and so he started to adopt that kind of mentality or lifestyle, but it, it still was very circumstantial. It was very, if he was around Christians, he liked being a Christian. If he wasn't, well, then he would be afraid, Right? The foundation of repentance and faith was not really laid in his life, right? So he gets to college and things start to deteriorate because he's surrounded by people that don't love God with their whole heart and they love other things with their whole heart. I won't tell you what those things are. They're not edifying, right? And so he is so, he's, he is living in conflict. And this is something to really understand about this generation. They live constantly in a state of confliction all the time. They're being pulled a hundred different ways. They're being uh, inundated with so many different things. They don't know what to believe. They're constantly in a state of being internally conflicted. This is why there's so much anxiety. Is because when, when you don't know what you believe, you don't know who you are, you're going to be anxious constantly. And that wears on them. And so this is something to pray for this generation. They need clarity conviction. They need peace, right? So we meet Justin at uh, an event at an apartment complex. We had like a snow cone machine, you know. There's that little bit pinch of relatability, right? And uh, you got to meet him somehow. And so he's like, I need a church so bad. I need a church. I didn't even know there was one. So he starts coming around. He's starting to do better. And then, but as we get into a Bible study, we realize 
eventually this problem of the fear of man, and you just adopt to be whoever, like whoever you're around, that has to go. If you're going to really follow Christ, be like, you can't be the rocky soil where as soon as some heat comes, you wither away, right? And so are you ready to give your whole life to Jesus, no matter what that costs, no matter what people say? No, I don't, I just, I want to. I know it's what I should do. I don't know if I can, right? He's going back and forth, and we can, you can see the fear on him. We're sitting in the Marshall Student Center, the main big building on campus, and so we say, you know, Justin, it seems that you really have a lot of fear, a spirit of fear on you, fear of man, fear of what other people think about you. Would you like to be free from that? Yes, I would. Would you like to fall out of agreement with that? Because you've agreed to that and adopted that in your life. Yeah, I will. So he prayed. He said, God, I, I, I don't want to be afraid anymore. And so I said, okay, look at me. I said, I command that fear to go in Jesus' name. And he was like, I'm going to give my life to Jesus right now. Let's do it. And he prayed right then and there. He prayed boldly. And he goes, I want to tell everybody in this building what I just did. It was a complete 180 degree turn. Amazing. God sets people free, right? I love fighting for people. It's something that my dad taught me. Fight for people. Fight in the spirit for them. It's that your battle's not against flesh and blood, right? I want to just encourage you guys. If you watch a lot of like Fox News, or any news really, you can really, it's very easy to become cynical, it's very easy to think that liberals are the enemy. Liberals are a little are crazy, but they're not the enemy. <laughs> the devil is the enemy. Lies that people believe are the enemy, right? We tear down strongholds, not people. We get mad at the devil and his lies, not people, right? And so every time, I just want to encourage you, every time you, you're, you feel uh, sad about the nation or, or think and are just tempted to despair, go to the war room, go to prayer, and address those strongholds, those lies that are just eating away at people. Something to remember, the devil hates his children. The people that serve the devil wholeheartedly serve a very cruel master. And he is doing his best to twist them and destroy their lives, destroy their children's life. He's a very cruel master. We serve an amazing master, the Lord Jesus, who loves us, sets us free. And so let's, let's remember to pray and, with, and that God would show mercy, right? Because that's what's going to change the nation, right? Amen? A girl in my wife's uh, small group, she grew up in a Muslim household. She started coming to USF, and uh, my wife and a, a co-worker of hers, Amanda, they started to, they shared the gospel with her. And uh, there was a veil over her. She could not understand it, but there was something about Amanda and Lacey that stuck with her. This love, this vibrance. I mean, look at her. She's so vibrant, right? I'm going to make her blush. Um, there's this, it's the, the power of the Holy Spirit that rests on a believer as they step out and are used by God and they share the love of Christ, the word of God. Even if that person doesn't understand a word they're saying, they just see this person is different. And so if they have any level of openness, that will lead them to want more, right? And so this is a lot of what we do. We share the gospel, and then we say, would you like to do a Bible study? Would you like to, to get together once a week and have some coffee or whatever and uh, open up God's Word, and I will sh- I'll show you what God has to say to you. And uh, we usually have between one and 200 of those meetings a week. Not me. I would die if I did that many. That would be crazy. <laughs> but uh, our staff as a whole, and we do that on three, different, uh, three or four different campuses. HCC, UT, USF, USF, St. Pete. And uh, so, uh, 
So Amanda starts to meet with uh, this girl in, in their small group. This is before she was in the small group, of course. And, uh, and Lacey comes and she helps and she shares her testimony of how God changed her life and how Jesus is real. And he's not a prophet who lived and died, but he's a living God who, who really was who he said he was. And he rose again from the dead and you can know him and your life can be different. And so for a long time, it, things were... Again, it was like a, talking to a brick wall, but she kept coming back and back. She said, okay, I got to think about this, and she kind of went away for a little while, and then some time passed, and she just kept, I, 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 what am I going to do, you know? And she comes back. She comes to church. She sees us worshiping Jesus, and she just knows he's real. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God. He's not a prophet and I want to know him. She gives her life to the Lord, transformed woman. And immediately afterwards, she reads the Bible, she knows exactly what it's saying. That spiritual stronghold, that block, completely gone. Amazing. Amazing. Thank God. This type of stuff is happening all the time. God is working on the college campus at U.S. And that's just our ministry. There's other, uh, there's other ministries that are out there. There's uh, all across the nation. People are getting saved, and they are coming into the life of the church, and they're, they're being transformed, and they're new. And I want you guys to know that, and I want you to please pray for us. Pray with, for us passionately. Use your faith. Every ounce of faith you have, we need. Every ounce of faith you have until you can no longer pray. This generation needs you. We need you. We partner together to do the work of God, right? Amen? Second Timothy, that was my intro. No. That's one of my dad's jokes. He's actually usually not kidding, though. <laughs> oh, he's great. So, um, Second Timothy, you see Paul and Timothy, they have this Elijah-Elisha relationship right? It's his son in the Lord. He calls him my son. And uh, he stuck that out, Timothy. You know, Paul had people that left him. Paul had people that abandoned him when he really needed them, and they, and they left. But Timothy stuck with it. And I'm so thankful because the book of Second Timothy is one of my favorites. It's so special. We wouldn't have it without Timothy's faithfulness. And Paul gets to say his last, these are, these are Paul's last words. This is, the, this is the end of his life. He's about to be martyred at this point. And, uh, you know, when you have a mentality of it's not how you start, it's how you finish, Second Timothy speaks to that quite a bit, right? And so you see here, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, his, this is Paul's exhortation, one of many. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard from me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall I be able to teach others also. Right? Paul's at the end. He's imparted everything he's got. And he's keeping the faith all the way to the end. Right? And he says, all right, I gave this to you. Now go and get it to as many faithful men as you can. Pass it on again and again. Make disciples right? They lived under a, a pr very oppressive and pagan government, right? The Roman government makes our government look like Catholic priests. I mean, they, you know, <laughs> they are, they, they was evil, evil, completely given over to the works of the devil. They had to fight that fight, and it cost them their lives, right? Thankful that we, it's not come to that we're still free to, to preach the gospel to people, and they might look at us and call us a name, but that's no big deal, right? And so go, make disciples, fulfill the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, right? And, uh, and then, you know, one of my favorite verses, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith, right? And he talks about the reward, right? And so, Timothy needed Paul to fight all the way to the end. 
to impart to him all the way to the end so that he could then go and do the same, right? And so if I guess I, had, I probably should have said the title of the sermon at the beginning of the sermon, but that, they didn't cover that online when I Googled it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's finish strong and pass it on, right? And that's what uh, our generation needs. We need to see, they need to see your faith. And you know what's amazing is you bring your faith with you into heaven. Like, we're not just going to be sitting around just, like, playing harps. Although I definitely want to play with Pastor Arlen up in heaven. He can really jam. He's great. Um, you know, it's going to be a powerful time of worshiping the King of Kings. And, and there's no way that the Lord is going to teach us how to move in faith our entire life and then all of a sudden not need that skill anymore, right? Like, we're going to be using our faith for eternity. It's how we relate to God. It's the basic building block of the kingdom. It's how you enter into the kingdom. It's how you are sanctified in the kingdom. It's how you spread the kingdom. Of course, faith will follow you all into eternity, right? And so I just want to encourage you to continue. We all need to continue to grow in faith, right? And for the young generation, because I see there's some younger people here, we got to be like Elisha. We got to follow the men and women who go before us to the very end and receive everything they possibly have to give us. And then we take that and God blesses it. Because when they get, make it all the way to the end and you make it all the way to the end with them, there is a doubling that can happen, an anointing multiplication, where you take that and you build off of it. And that's, that, I'm sure that's the heart of all of you who are parents. You want your children to take what you have and run with it. My son's middle name is Elisha. That's what I want for him, right? And so I was, you know what? Let's end it there. Let's pray. And I'd like to pray that there would be for those who maybe have felt that despair, they would come away with hope, renewed vigor and strength to move in faith. Um, I think we have a situation over here, Pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, gotcha, good. So yeah, let's pray, and we'll pray for this man as well. What's his name? Don? Yeah. Father, thank you for Don. We pray you heal him right now in Jesus' mighty name. We pray you feel so much better. Lord, touch him, Holy Spirit, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for these uh, wonderful, amazing saints, these veterans of the cross. God, I pray you encourage them. I pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to come renewed vigor, Lord, hope for this generation, hope for our country, gift of faith. And I pray for everyone here who is having a torch passed to them. They know that there's more that they can do. There's more that they, can, they, have, a, they have a lot more ahead of them to run. Lord, I pray you give them faith to take hold of it, to stick with the people and the mentors they have, and not, not uh, let this world sway them one way or another, but have a new passion for the kingdom of God, and to give their very utmost for your highest, Lord Jesus. I thank you for these amazing people. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Love you too. Thank you. I think it was Churchill who said that if you're 20 to 30 years old and you're not a liberal, you have no heart. But if you're 30 to whatever and aren't conservative, you have no brain. So there is a time, you know, for, for liberalness, I guess you should say. And, uh, but like Billy said, we've we got to get through all that stuff. We really do. But I have seen in my life, it seems like we said, you know, we'll concede to young people to all this stuff 
And then when they get 30 years old, we'll pick it back up and try to get them straightened out with God. That's not the attitude. And I thank God for people like Billy and Lacey that are in the colleges, on the campuses, spreading the gospel, because that is the answer for America or any country to reach that generation. And when he reminded me of all that these kids are going through today, I thought, I can't imagine the confusion that must be in their hearts. And like John the Baptist, we got to make the path straight again for them. Amen? Amen. So more than just pray for Billy and Lacey and, and Cornerstone Ministry, we, we also support them financially. And uh, if God has laid it on your heart today, by all means, please give them something. Billy, should, they made a check. Would it be to Billy Cooper or would it be to Cornerstone or Cornerstone Ministries? If you're going to make a check to them, do so. And uh, on the way out, you can give it to them. We are going to give them something anyhow, but that's just above and beyond because of what they're doing. It's so very important. Remember, keep Brother Don in prayer. He wasn't feeling good when he came here this morning. This is two weeks in a row the devil has taken two people out. Amen? Amen. He's trying to come against us. But we're not going to gonna stop short of serving Jesus. Amen? Why don't you stand? Now, the altars are always open. And as I pray a prayer of dismissal, there's already been mentioned to me, some that need prayer, you can come forward, and we'll be glad to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for laying the ministry upon the younger generation to pass this torch on, Father. And I, I pray for this generation. What confusion there must be. Become Adults are telling them all kinds of crazy, crazy things that we can't even imagine but for their young hearts and minds, it is so devastating to them, Father. So we just pray that you would raise up more and more people. And those of us who have served you for many, many years realize that we still have something to offer. Our faith, our lifestyle, our finances. So I just pray in Jesus' name as we leave here, keep us safe once again. Continue to bless Billy and Lacey and their new family. We thank you so much, Lord God. We ask this all in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Those of you who need prayer, please come forward. We will pray for you. The rest of you can be dismissed. God bless you. And don't forget, if you feel that God led you to give them something, please do so.